All around the world, on every continent except for Antarctica, there exists examples of ancient stonework which exhibit the same construction technique, whereby individual stone blocks are oddly shaped, incredibly large and held together by their construction alone. Known as polygonal masonry and falling under the broader categories of cyclopean and megalithic, the shaping and fitting of the blocks is intricate and extremely precise, fitting together in often astounding ways and so completely accurately that it is not possible to slide the proverbial sheet of paper between them. Archaeologists will tell you that these walls were made by whoever the leading civilization was in the area. In Italy, they're the product of the Romans. In Greece, they're the ancient Greeks. In Egypt, the dynastic Egyptians. In Mexico and Peru, they're the Aztecs and the Inca. To support this, they often point to the existence of other constructions in the area which they have definitively dated, but as every first year archaeology student knows, archaeology is all about layers, and the lower or deeper the layer, the older it must be. However, the polygonal walls are, more often than not, beneath these structures, and have never provided dating evidence of their own. There is also the fact that the confirmed Roman, Greek, Egyptian, Incan and so on buildings are almost always of a completely different construction method and design to what they are above, yet that usually doesn't concern the experts. Furthermore, the blocks are invariably much larger than the other, obviously later, masonry and weigh far in excess of what would have been possible to move given the technology available at the supposed time of their construction. Indeed, some are so massive that it would be impossible to move even with today's advanced machinery. Most of the claimed builders of these walls did not possess the technology to even quarry blocks of this size and precision. Mainstream academia will happily explain that these were cut using copper and stone tools, as this is the only evidence that they do actually have of the construction methods used during these periods. To their minds, it is obvious fact that, because they only have evidence for copper and stone tools, then these must have been used. The problem with this is that copper is a relatively soft metal, which is incapable of being used on very hard material such as granite. They then argue that it is perfectly possible to quarry limestone, and even granite, by skilled quarrymen identifying the exact grain of the rock and using wedges, sand and water to split the rock exactly where it is needed. However, that doesn't explain how polygonal blocks were then crafted into their unique form-fitting shapes, nor how they were then transported often hundreds of miles from the quarries. And then there is the fact that, whilst the best and most extensive examples are to be found in Mesoamerica, and northern South America, examples of polygonal masonry can be found on every continent of the world, except for Antarctica, but then who knows what lies beneath the ice. Mainstream academia will tell you that these walls were all constructed at a time when there was no global trade, or even contact of any kind between the continents. They seem perfectly happy to suggest that each and every one of these sites is just an amazing coincidence, that somehow the construction, quarrying, shaping and transportation techniques were all developed by each civilization completely independently of each other. So, where does that leave us? To my mind, the inescapable conclusion is that there must have been a global civilization at some point in the distant past that had the technology to easily manipulate massive stone blocks, to transport them with ease, and to shape them in such a complicated and intricate way as to be cheap, easy, and worth the effort. Where this civilization fits into the established timeline of human history is another matter, of course, Mainstream academia insists that there were no such ancient civilizations, that civilization started approximately 5,200 years ago, around 3,200 BCE in Mesopotamia, and that they are able to trace the development from then all the way to modern day without there being a shred of evidence of such an advanced civilization. 
However, recent discoveries at Gobekli Tepe in modern day Turkey have already proven that we do not have a complete understanding of the development of the human species as this site has been definitively dated back to approximately 10,000 BCE. Interestingly, there is growing evidence that a global cataclysm around 12,800 years ago, known as the Younger Dryas Impact, caused a mass extinction event across the Northern Hemisphere when a four kilometer wide comet impacted the Earth. If there was an advanced human civilization on Earth before that, would we necessarily have much evidence of its existence if it was quite literally wiped off the face of the planet and the remnants of the human race forced to revert back to a more primitive existence? But that is the subject for a different video. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click on the like button to tell YouTube that others might like it too. Please also subscribe to this channel and click the little bell icon to be alerted to future videos.